Hi everybody. On today's episode of Dude I Love or Hate My Ride at Home Edition, we are going to take a look at one of the classic battles in off-roading, Jeep versus Toyota. I went through our master list and cherry picked some of the nicest Jeep and Toyota submissions and I want to watch them now and then at the end of the video talk about which one of these groups actually loves their vehicles more, the Jeep crowd or the Toyota crowd. We're going to kick this one off with a super cool Wrangler, let's get into it. Hey guys, this is Nick from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania and this is my 2017 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon Recon Edition. Actually, I factory ordered this Jeep, uh, took delivery of it on a Thursday and dropped it off on Monday for full line -X, as you guys can see. Um, we'll just start in the front. As you guys can see, it's, uh, it's rip supercharged. And I'm running a worn Xeon 12,000 pound winch in the front. Also running a Factor 55 link on the stock recon front bumper, which I love. Um, obviously we have the factory LEDs. I'm running a Fox Mopar four inch lift with the external reservoirs. I'm also running the, currently I'm just running the Fuel Beast wheels 20 by 12 with Toyo MT 38 by 1550 R20 tires. I love these tires. On the exterior I'm running the, this is the uh, Rebel Off-Road Blackout Kit, fully loaded with the lights. We'll actually go on the interior. As I, you guys can see, um, they said fully line X. They did a great job on the line X. Factory red seat belts, that's just a recon package along with the red stitching. As you guys can see, I'm running the rock hard 4x4 cage. Goes the whole way back. Running S Pod, which is fantastic for all the accessories. Five speed manual. There's a comms, and this Jeep currently has, what, 22,000 miles on it. I am running the a boost gauge over here, voltmeter, and an air fuel ratio. Also running the full WeatherTech mats. Just love how it preserves the interior. Moving on to the rear. You guys can once again see the rock hard kit. I have a uh, first aid kit. I have my trail bag. All that good stuff. Here's the kit again from Rebel Off-Road. Go to the back. I do have the, here are my comms, just have the factory Jeep CV system. Back here, this is the factory sub along with uh, dual fire extinguishers. You guys can see my, my wiring. I just ran Deutsch plugs so I can still take the top off. Uh, this is actually a, a high lift mount. I believe it's Dominion Off Road, uh, along with the Crazy Beavers, the Murder Spork, and an axe. Moving on. On this side, once again, just the blackout kit. But actually, underneath the Jeep, I don't know how you guys can, how well you guys can see this running the full Artex skid plate. So, from front to rear, which is fantastic. I'll show you guys the, the supercharger on the hood. I'm also running onboard air on this Jeep. This should be interesting. And also I'm running a, a hood lock. So I just have the factory struts. They're not factory, they're actually from Jeep. I used to put them on aftermarket. Um, here's the supercharger system. Here's my onboard air, my S-Pod system. Here's all that. Future plans for the Jeep are gonna be, and we're running a, a Dynatrack XD60 front and rear. I'll be running trail ready, the full forged beadlocks 20 by 12. I'll also be running TerraFlex long arms. Right now I'm just running TerraFlex short arms. Um, and I'll also be running a center force clutch because um, the supercharger is doing a number on, on my stock clutch. Give you guys a little more details on what they did for a Linex. I said this is all two-tone. 
So once again, did a great job on a Line X, super happy with it. Even the fender liners are Line X'd for the Poison Spider armor. You guys see the recondition, everything, everything is Line X'd. So even all the plastic is Line X'd. This is actually uh, the TerraFlex. I mean, it's factory, but it actually is the TerraFlex tire carrier. All right, guys, thank you so much for, for watching a video on my Jeep. Well, thank you, Nick, for sending in that Jeep, man. You have a lot of stuff going on there. First of all, Supercharger, love it. The Line X job looks really, really clean. And then that onboard air, I love how clean it actually mounted up under the hood there for you. And then you know what it might seem like a little thing, but those hood struts, it's always been annoying to me that Jeeps don't have those standard and uh, just being able to leave your hood up is a nice feature. That's a really cool Jeep, man. You've obviously spent a lot of time and money on that bad boy. Now let's move on to a Toyota from the east coast of Canada. Let's take a look. What's going on guys? My name is John and I'm coming to you from outside of Halifax, Nova Scotia. Today I was going to talk about my 2006 Toyota Tacoma. I purchased this truck in 2017. It had recently undergone the Toyota frame replacement warranty due to the corrosion problem that they had at the time. And since I've owned the truck, it's undergone a couple transformations. It previously had a 2 inch lift under and about a 32 inch KM2 tire. It's now sitting at close to 3 inches and has a 35 inch KM3 tire. The truck has a 2.7 liter 4 cylinder engine. It has a 5 speed manual transmission and a 410 gear ratio. So starting at the front of the truck, I've installed an ARB front bumper, a worn 8,000 pound winch, and a different set of headlights because the originals were getting very sun faded. Going under the truck, the lift is accomplished by a newer style strut from the current generation Tacoma. That gives the older generation about an inch of lift. One thing that's nice about the Tacoma is it comes with a half decent skid plate and the approach angle is quite good. And the amount of ground clearance they have in the front is also quite good. On top of the strut, there's a poly spacer block and I've replaced the upper control arm with the Freedom brand off-road one. It's a different angle of control arm. It's a lot heavier duty, has a larger ball joint, and it kind of compensates for the, the lift as far as the alignment goes. I know a lot of people don't like the poly block, but the front lift actually cost me nothing on this truck since it was leftover parts from a previous project. Since this truck is a regular cab version, the ground clearance is quite good in the middle, has an excellent breakover angle. Going to the rear of the truck, the lift is accomplished by a set of OME springs, as I said about the frame. It's very nice to have that here in the northeast, since we do have a large problem with corrosion. Going along to the back of the truck, I've replaced the taillights. When I first got this truck, the taillights didn't even match and one was broken. As I mentioned, it had a pretty rough life, I would believe, before. In the bed of the truck, I've installed the Tacoma bed mat. Since these boxes in the Tacoma are actually more or less just a one big piece of plastic, things tend to slide around there an awful lot. So having the rubber mat prevents things from moving as much. And yes, right now, the spare tire is just sitting there with a strap onto it because this is actually one of the first trips I've had out of the garage with this lift and tire combination. The tire I do intend on mounting somewhere where it's sitting at with the two inch receiver. I'm going to cut the end of it off and weld that to the back rack. Then the tire can mount kind of like a receiver would and pull the pin to take it on and off. I'm just trying to figure out where to position it so that I can actually see out the back a little bit. Going around to the inside of the truck, being the regular cab version, is a very base model. It doesn't have almost any options. It does have AC, it has crank windows. One neat feature about the manual transmission is the clutch cancel. So you actually don't have to step on the clutch to the truck. It's 
currently starting at 192,000 miles, most of which have been problem free. I've owned the truck for well over 12,000 miles and other than the initial repairs that it needed, I haven't done much of anything to it. It served me very well and very reliably. When I first got the truck, the steering shaft was wore out on it. That is a common item with the Tacomas and some other uh, truck-based Toyota products. The front wheel bearings had some play in them, so I replaced those, and it needed some universal joints. That's really the most repairs I've done to it since I've owned it. So I guess the question is, do I like the truck? To be honest, I really do like the truck. It just has the uh, some sort of character to it. It uh, just puts a smile on your face to drive it with the manual transmission and how small the truck is. It's pretty much impossible to find a truck of this size nowadays. I would definitely recommend a Tacoma to anybody who is looking for off-roading or just kind of a general truck to use. The resale value has been very high on them for years and the reliability seems to be there. I'd just like to say thank you to the TFL crew. You guys make awesome videos and I really appreciate seeing all that great information coming out. Thank you very much and everybody have a great day. Hey, thanks for sending in that Tacoma, John. Uh, you said it right there near the end, man. One of the coolest things about this truck are just the proportions of it. I mean, it's a it's a reg cab midsizer. You got that tiny little wheelbase. Uh, combinations like this, build combinations these days are really hard to find and you just can't get regular cab midsizers anywhere anyways. So uh, yeah, that's definitely unique. I love the big tires. Sounds like you've done a lot of the work yourself. Um, yeah, super cool Tacoma, man. I really, really like it. Now, let's move on back to another Jeep and this is another Jeep pickup. This is a competitor to that Tacoma. This is a brand new Gladiator, but it's certainly not stock. And one of the cool things I think you should pay attention to here is what you can do if you go out and buy a Gladiator Sport, one of the more basic models, and then upgrade it rather than starting with the Rubicon model like a lot of people do. Let's watch. Hey TFO trucks, this is Larry from sunny Greeley, Colorado, submitting my request for my love it or hate it, my 2020 Jeep Gladiator Sport S that we've had eight months. And there's really nothing you can complain when you have a truck like this, because what other truck that's made can you do this with? We've roughly got 12, right around 12,000 miles on it. We put the back track seat covers on it. We got the bonnet cover not too long ago. We got our CB, CB bar. We got our vector off-road bar put in it. We've installed our Overland rack with the spare tire. The cool thing about this rack is that your spare tire lower that you have underneath your truck mounts onto the rack. You can see it right there, so you can just mount the tire right to it. We got our jacks, 35 inch tires with the Mopar lift. And we also recently just got the tubular front front boards for it. As of right now with everything we've had, we have not had any problems with our Jeep. It's performed just how it should off road. And for me to you guys, I would really like to tell you how much I appreciated the videos when we were getting ready to purchase our Gladiator because I look back at all the Ranger and Gladiator videos you did and obviously you can see which one I picked. But can't say I hate anything about it. Best truck I've ever owned and look forward to all the miles with it. Thank you guys and thanks everything you do. Be safe. Well, Larry, it sounds like you love your truck, man. And I really appreciate you including that stock photo. It gives you a sense for the transformation the truck went through. Uh, it sounds like you took full advantage of that Mopar catalog with the lift, uh, with those tube doors. Those are super cool. I like the Overland rig or Overland setup you've got going on in the back with that tire up there, all of those fuel caddies. Uh, this Gladiator looks like a monster and it looks like you're gonna have a lot of fun out there on the trail with it. Why wouldn't you love a truck that's 
that's this cool, right? Uh, so finally, let's move on to one more Toyota. And uh, this one is a little different than the rest. This is actually basically stock. It is a TRD Pro, but not a lot of modifications have been done to it. But that doesn't mean you can't love your vehicle, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at this 4Runner TRD Pro. Hey, TFL. This is my 2017 Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro. My name is Will. I bought it in San Diego um, in August 2017 for the MSRP of about 43. And I love this thing. Shortly after I bought it, I uh, road trip to Michigan to visit some friends. I've been to Oregon and back a couple of times to see my grandfather. He loved it so much, he went out and bought a 2017 uh, 4Runner TRD Pro in white, and he absolutely loves this thing. Um, right now, I've got about 47,000 miles on it, uh, and that's due to road trips. Uh, like I said, I've been to Oregon and back a few times. I've been to Michigan and back a few times. Um, I've been out to Arizona a bunch of times. I just love driving this thing so much, and as I've had it, uh, I've done my, uh, you know, modifications, as you can see. So it started with the TRD cold air intake that I bought, installed myself, super easy to do. Uh, I put a scan gauge on the center console. That way I can monitor the water temperature of the vehicle as well as the transmission's temperature when I'm towing. Um, I installed the Gobi Stealth roof rack with a buddy of mine. A couple hours and a couple of years later, got installed and I love that thing. Got a lot of compliments about it. Simple things like the window tint uh, and blacking out the logo uh, was pretty simple um, and just definitely changed the vehicle. The vehicles, you know, as you see Barcelona red and black, but it came with chrome on the back. So not a huge fan, but a simple mod and it definitely changed it. Uh, I changed out the exhaust and installed a Borla exhaust. It is not loud at all. I even did a decibel check on the inside cabin at speeds of 25, 30, 45, and 60. And even at 60 miles an hour at highway speeds, the decibel check on the inside was only two decibels higher than stock. But I still have a good sounding exhaust. Uh, and under load, it definitely lets you know it's there, but it's nothing that's droney, it's not obnoxious, and I really enjoy the vehicle. Um, I did install the NFAB steps, not rock sliders at all, but they look good and they're functional. Uh, I do take this vehicle off-roading, but never in a situation that I've, you know, had to worry about getting stuck um, at all, so not yet anyways. But uh, yeah, uh, the next thing I, I did was I addressed the lighting issues. As you know, the headlights uh, are projector style, but the halogen bulbs just don't cut it. Uh, so I installed from a company called Last Fit, a set of LEDs, super easy to install, was not a big fan of some of the other companies that require you to drill into the dust cap. And then I have a bunch of random pieces of you know, metal hanging out in there, not a big fan. These were a very easy install and took all five minutes to do honestly the fog lights are from baja designs they are my squadron pros and when i'm off-roading at night uh it's night and day it's crazy they are so bright so um yeah that's my uh 2017 uh forerunner and i love this thing my buddies all love this thing i like it so much because i can get in the vehicle and say hey I want to go out for the weekend and go camping um, or from road tripping. I just sleep in the back of the forerunner and I like that. I can just say, Hey, I'm going to head out to the desert or head out to the mountains and I can throw my buddies in there. I can throw my stuff in there and throw, uh, you know, some toys in there and then just go out and go exploring, get lost and enjoy it. And this vehicle has done everything that I've ever asked of it. And so a couple things I'm not a big fan of, uh, it does need a sixth gear. The transmission, while reliable, and I've had no issues with it, uh, it would do better for a six uh, gear. So uh, a little bit better if, if it had it, but don't hate it for it. So fuel economy uh, on the highway, 
uh, I get about 21 to 22 miles to the gallon and but it could do for a little bit better fuel economy uh, the infotainment system as you know is kind of a big issue on the inside um, crashes on me not a big fan uh, still kind of in the works for just you know deciding on which system I'd like to install in the future so we'll see but at the moment it works and that's all I can really ask of it so the things I like about this truck I love the way it looks I'm a huge fan I, I it, there's a, an option an, uh, an opportunity where you're not walking away from this thing and looking over your shoulder just thinking damn you're wrong <laughs> love your vehicle I love this thing uh, I also like that I can literally go anywhere this Toyota knocked it out of the park with this truck I like the fact that I can hop in daily drive this thing to and from work every day all day and it does fine at the same time I can decide hey I'm just gonna go take that trail it'll do that and depending on how aggressive you want to get it'll take you there too so I really enjoy that uh, one of the third the third thing that I really like about this thing is the aftermarket everyone's forerunner is different and I like that the aftermarket provides a ton of support for this vehicle and I don't hate that <laughs> you know I love this roof rack I get a lot of compliments about it uh, it's done wonderfully for me I installed it with a buddy of mine after I came back from a deployment and like I said a couple hours a couple beers later uh, and it was great so yeah that's my 2017 TRD Pro um, no mods to the inside really just that scan gauge So I'm sitting here monitoring the transmission temperature. And that's, that's very handy when I'm towing. Make sure I'm not overheating because it doesn't tell you at all. Uh, so I've got my water temperature, my air inlet temperature, and the battery. Just some options that I chose. Um, and yeah, you can hear the exhaust a little bit. I think it sounds pretty good. And like I said, under load, it sounds good when you get on it pretty hard it sounds good as well but other than that that's about it that's all you got so i appreciate the time thanks again and that's my 2017 toyota 4runner trd pro thanks again guys once again, thank you for that submission. And uh, like I said off the top, I mean, besides the roof rack and that ladder, this TRD Pro is basically stock, but it is still loved. This is, you know, it's an impossible one to call, of course, which fan base is actually more loyal, stronger, loves their trucks more. Uh, if I had to make the call though, I'm gonna go with Toyota, and the reason is reliability. The reliability of Toyotas always comes up. Most owners love to tell reliability stories about their Tacomas, and uh, in this video, we didn't hear of any Jeep problems, uh, but you know, on a wider scale, many third-party tests tell us that Jeep reliability is not great, and reliability is one of the most important things for an off-roader, and if you do have a vehicle that is just reliable day after day after day, it makes you love it that much more. Now that's not to say you Jeepers don't love your Jeeps, and especially once you get into the aftermarket, you're making these Jeeps way more reliable. But if I had to make the blanket statement here between these two groups, I would say that the Toyota crew does love their rigs a little bit more. That's it for this one, guys. No matter what you drive, a Toyota or a Jeep, I'm just happy we all love vehicles and we all love getting off-road. Now, go below, leave a comment, let me know if you think I'm absolutely right or maybe you think I'm dead wrong let me know down there in the comments below and as always hit like hit subscribe and come back to the channel for the latest news views and real-world reviews See you.